I'm going to take this $300 IKEA table apart, try to make something better with it, and then sell it for $1,500. But what the buyers don't know is that I will eventually give it away for free. And somehow it turned into an argument with my wife. This video is sponsored by Incogni. Years ago we bought this IKEA table and it has one big flaw that I think I can fix. It's been sitting in our sunroom for a while, it's been acting like my workbench for shooting videos. Oh f and we've tried selling it on Marketplace a couple of times. We even tried giving it away for free at two occasions, but no one wanted it. And I think I know why. It's ugly. The rounded edges of the table kind of stops it from looking like a real dining table. It's like they're just too rounded. But then I looked at it one day and I kind of kneeled to see how I could take it apart to throw it away and I realized that the bottom part is actually quite nice. It's very sturdy for one, but the way it is made it's really good for leg space. There are only four legs sticking down and the crossbeam is high enough so that it doesn't come in the way for your legs. But the way it's currently made with the massive roundover, you can sit at the short end, but it's not ideal. So I thought that instead of throwing this away, I will use the bottom and make a brand new top for the table. So could I transform this into something that someone would want to buy? And can I sell it? The old tabletop was MDF, so I threw that away. Actually, I didn't. That would be reckless. Of course, since it's from IKEA, I had it cut apart first. I didn't actually cut it apart either. I can use it for something else. The base is made from solid birch. And in this video, I will make a new tabletop for this table. I will try to sell it and then if I find a buyer, I will give it to them as a surprise. But little did I know making a new tabletop would result in so much work, cost and time. When thinking about the new design, I decided that I wanted to make it a bit bigger than the current tabletop. And to make sure it would look good, I drew it up in Fusion 360 and tried different versions. And since the legs are round, the square top didn't look too good. So I decided the piece with the roundover would give the best look. Just not as much of a roundover as the previous piece. Yeah. No, 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 I'm, I'm not. Sorry, I'm not interested. Are you tired of getting tons of spam phone calls? Well, there is a solution to it. And this video is sponsored by Incogni. The problem is that your personal information is being sold online without you knowing about it. There are thousands of data brokers selling your personal information. The good news is that you can request them to delete it, but the bad news is that it would take years to do that manually. So what Incogni does is they do all that stuff for you. They take your personal data off the market by contacting all of these brokers. It's all done automatically and they continuously keep the protection updated. But then you might wonder what type of data do these brokers have on you? Well, it's usually name, email, address, phone number, education, IP address, shopping habits, and even more. And they get that information from when you sign up for a newsletter. You might have encountered searching for something and then all of a sudden you get ads from all of these services that you've never even visited. Or you might even have gotten one of those emails from a company saying that hackers were able to steal your information off their platform. So you can secure your personal data by visiting incogni.com. And the first 100 people to use my discount code, the Swedish maker, through the link in the description will get 60% off. Thanks to Incogni for sponsoring today's video. To make sure it would look good, I exported the Fusion file to USDC and I used it with the built-in augmented reality in my phone. That is a good way to see the table in reality before it's even made. So there I was with a bunch of solid birch and I had a massive problem. The size of my workshop. It won't really fit. In order to plane this wood I needed more space, so I had to reorganize my workshop to be able to plane the long pieces of wood. Since the finish table will measure 190 centimeters, I need at least pieces that are 210 to account for snipe. The idea I came up with was to move everything except the planer from the wall so that I could run the pieces from one side of the room and out the other. I say idea like it was a product of thinking, but it was the only way to place it really. 
But I also realized my planer has a really short outfeed table. I'm not judging, it has other qualities, like a yellow dust collection. And then I realized that I could probably use the stand for the miter saw as an extended outfeed table because it has these rollers that are perfect for the task. I knew this was going to be a heavy and demanding task, but I didn't know what I was getting into. I started milling all the wood, two sides to start with. Then I placed the wood in a pile and had it rest for a day before I kept working on it. I did the entire process over a couple of days just to make sure the wood wouldn't move on me. I don't mean run away, but you know, change shape. I find it helps the process if you listen to a really good podcast, like the Three Know The Makers podcast. It just so happens that I'm in it. This part was so exhausting. I was going back and forth with all this heavy wood in this small space. But eventually, I had pieces enough to glue up the tabletop. The part I was really longing for, gluing up all the pieces in my small workshop. I had everything else tucked away, had the clamps ready, lots of glue, and of course, my domino. I made sure the pieces were lined up nicely, looking good. I used the Festool Domino, the most loved and hated machine out there. Why? Well, it is very good, but it's also very expensive. And you know what? You don't need this to glue the tabletop. But the small dominoes that you place inside the wood helps the wood align and you don't end up with a lot of shifting. And in this case, it was really helpful. When all the dominoes were in place with glue, I clamped it all down. And then when the stressful part is over, the only thing you can do is wait. And there's nothing worse than just waiting. So I like to occupy myself with a movie, a beer and some snacks. Doesn't matter what time it is. If I want that for breakfast, I can have it. After the movie ended, I could loosen all the clamps and fill some of the knot holes with epoxy. This part also involves waiting, a really long wait to be honest, because the epoxy I have requires 48 hours. But when that had dried, I could cut the tabletop to size. So I have this track that I just place at the edge of the tabletop, then I grab a plunge saw, preferably green, put it on the track and cut. And that gives this straight edge. But you said you wanted to round over the edges. Hang on, we'll get there. I 3D printed a jig that would act as a guide for my router. This jig has the exact round over that I drew up in CAD before starting this project. I placed that same jig on a corner and I drew the round over with a pen. Then I tried my best to follow that line with a jigsaw because I don't want to remove all of the wood with the router. Then I grabbed a router bit that has a ball bearing and a smiley face. And I had that follow the 3D printed jig to create the round over I wanted. Then I just repeated the same step for the remaining three corners, giving me a tabletop with a nice roundover. Then I sanded everything with 80 grit sandpaper. There is nothing amusing about this part. If I had an underpaid employee, they would be doing this all day long. But I, I don't. I don't have any employees. I have kids though. I've made a big tabletop before, but I can't remember how much work it was sanding at all. Not to mention the weight of carrying it. Before sanding the rest, I wanted to give the underside of the table a chamfer. This is a nice detail that sort of gives the impression of a thinner tabletop than it actually is. So I placed a bit with a sad face in the router and I just went around the entire table. You need to bring the router when you go around the table. Now I was finally set to do the rest of the sanding. And this is the part every woodworker dreads the most. So it helps if you have a green tool. I'm not sponsored by the way. This is getting expensive. I sanded, sanded and sanded. I fell asleep sanding, so I brought a pillow so that I could keep sanding while sleeping. When I woke up I had drooled all over the table. But that's a good thing because I wanted to water pop the table. That means wetting the tabletop, not soaking it, just a bit wet, the perfect amount of wet. That causes the grain of the wood to stand and after it's been drying for a while you can sand the raised grain off. Before I gave the table a finish I engraved my name and date to the bottom of the table with a new laser I got from IKEA. Not IKEA, IKEA. This one is a monster, it's 48 watt and runs really smoothly and fast. 
It's also the first diode laser that I've seen where you can switch from 48 watts down to 24. Like now for instance when I'm only engraving. It also has a motorized C-axis that you can use for calibration. I use it outdoors because of the fumes. Since it is a diode laser you can place it on top of your workpiece and then center the engrave with the laser showing you where it will do the engraving. And then I engrave that piece. And since it is 48 watts you can actually do some cutting with this monster. I also sanded all the pieces for the bottom part of the table to be able to give that a new coat of finish. I gave the entire tabletop a coat of Rubio Monocoat Hard Wax Oil. This particular one is called Cotton White and gives the tabletop a white tint. The last step was to add some threaded inserts. You see the old tabletop had them as well because the table base attaches with machine screws to the top. I placed the bottom part upside down, centered it and marked the location for the holes and then I drilled and added some insert nuts. And then there it was, a rebuilt IKEA table into a solid wood table, ready to be sold. So I was just about to post the table in various groups on Facebook to have it sold. And something weird happened. My wife looked at the table and she said, I want it. And I said, but I was supposed to sell it. And she said, well, sell it to me then. And I said, well, we basically share economy. And she said, well, weren't you supposed to give it away anyways? And there I was getting myself a new table that I was supposed to sell. We currently live in our summer house and the kitchen needs a renovation, which might be an upcoming project. But for now, we replaced the old kitchen table with this one. So what are you waiting for? Go get yourself an IKEA piece of furniture and just take it apart. 